Talk and Power, your motorsport and motoring radio show. Now on 88.5 FM, the valley comes alive. And podcasting across iTunes and talkandpower.com.au. Okay, episode 78 of the Talk and Power podcast on Nick DeCembry here with co-host Todd Brinkworth and we have got royalty in the room with us tonight, Todd. Yeah, we do. We have got Race Wars, Race Director Jamie Paolucci and Competition Director Dieter Van Mollendorf. Thanks. How are you guys? Great, thanks for having us. Did yeah. you get your, your royalty, titles correct? Your, we'll take royalty. That yeah. was all right. He's yeah. actually he's actually now known as King Colucci, but <laughs> <laughs> that is a certain ring to it, Jamie. It does indeed, mate. Well, we'll, we'll get into that later on. Okay. <laughs> hey, look, guys, thanks for joining us. It's a it's a pleasure to have you guys here. We've had Jamie on. Well, it was two years ago. We didn't we didn't catch yeah. up with you last year, but two years ago we caught up with you and over the phone. Yeah. But we thought I think it's necessary to get you guys in and have a have a chat. We're a one we're less than. A month actually we're only three weeks out from from race wars yep. it's probably i'm not going to say the biggest but one of the biggest motorsport events in western australia it's yep. it's right up there and and certainly for the south coast of western australia it would be the biggest motorsport event so some of our listeners on the 88.5 fm network they they wouldn't know what race wars is so for the uninitiated just give us like in one minute what is race wars without saying the word skids <laughs> okay, watch the first Fast and Furious and watch the race wars scene. No, no. That <laughs> <laughs> Our runway's no, no, not that long. No, we are, yeah. <laughs> we are a runway racing event, uh, predominantly to emulate um, highway roll racing. Mm-hmm. So the, the premise was for people to have a rolling start, yep. get to a certain point and say 100 metres from the start line uh, and then accelerate at full acceleration. For 400 meters, 800 meters, um, and that would emulate the highway racing mm-hmm. scenario. Uh, on top of that, the standing 1,000 meter sprint, if you like, um, which is a solo pass. You're not against other vehicles. Uh, in essence, that is what race wars is. We've tabled other events from that. Cash days being the run what you brung eighth mile. And now we have the Race Wars Sprint that we had its first, the inaugural event last year, um, up Mount Adelaide in the Albany Township. And again, that was that, that was a fantastic event all around. Mm, so yeah. yeah, in short, that's Race Wars. Now that's 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 good to know because a lot of our listeners won't won't know. The majority probably do, but for the FM, the F, our FM listeners out in the on community radio, they probably yeah. don't know. So Race Wars, um, so roll in. We start off with a 400 meter yep. roll on, 800 meter roll on, and for those that are capable, yep, 1,000 meter. Correct. So it's again, it's it's one of those things. If you build it, they will come. Mm-hmm. And race horses certainly um, provided that We've, we have a, a good proportion of our entrants that are building vehicles specifically for the V Max event, being the 1,000 yeah. meter, um, the 800 meter. There's definitely a camaraderie between um, competitors, uh, car enthusiasts alike that'll go there and race their mates or can line up against that exotic vehicle or you know test out the latest round of mods that they'd carried out over the course of the year mm. from the previous year's event. So we get a lot of return um, entrance as well as having those first timers, be it for the 400 meter, the 800 meter, or the cash days heads up, um, especially under lights at night, that's that's a great um, a great event that, that shows a fair bit of diversity for the types of cars that enter where once upon a time it would have been the domain of say a, a V8 rear wheel drive, you know, four link sprung rear end vehicle. We're now seeing a lot of the all wheel drive community, the turbo cars, some front wheel drive cars, mm. you know, patrols as LSAs using that all wheel drive sort of drive train, yeah. getting enough power down to make that eighth mile sprint. So yeah, um, yeah. look, we're, we're really happy with the way the, the, the event, which theoretically for a bunch of hoons has organically grown over the, since 2013. So you, well, you just let us into yeah. the, oh, I guess the next question, like you talk about 2013. Mm. T- tell us how it started. I know Todd, Todd was a member as well of Anti Lag. Yep. I wasn't. I was familiar with Anti Lag, but yep. I wasn't really in that that group. Yep. So tell us how how you actually went from Anti Lag, a group yep. of 
Hoons, I think it was yeah. your word that you yeah, used. Yeah. So the we're, we're How did you get to where we are now? So well, just in, in passing, um, Antilag was an online community, or still is an online community, um, online chat group community, forum as such. Um, it was predominantly about uh, turbocharged and Japanese performance vehicles, yeah. but the, the spread is quite wide. I mean, if it had wheels and it skidded and it made lots of noise and went relatively fast, we were all fans. Yeah. So there were there were a number of people involved within that group that um, predominantly Jonathan Murray, who is mm-hmm. the, 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 the brainchild of, of Race Wars, um, and Paul Brockback, who is the, I could say, the director of Anti-Lag. <laughs> um, uh, it, re- it basically revolved around mutual friends, um, beer, more beer and then discussion and that is the the um the birth of of race wars really was john had a few and um he knew of a airstrip john had a bit of a penchant for um small airplanes mm. and I, I think he still does he still have a license i'm not sure but um he shouldn't be mm-hmm. flying anyway um <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, he knew, knew of a runway um, out in Wildcatchem, and so you know, since 2013, it was a, a, a small idea. Obviously, the, the runway racing had started to really evolve in Europe, um, Russia, and the US predominantly, um, and so the, the the idea was just to get you know we could get 50 guys together and we'd just go out and see what our cars could do. And yeah. we were all we we're all into it. Yeah. Um and the discussion sort of went through as you do on a forum, you sort of just put it out there and it spread like wildfire. Yeah. So for those of that that don't know, Jonathan Jonathan Murray is I call him kind of not you're the face of, of race wars, but he's equally as well, and his personality lends itself to the the success of race wars. I, there's no unequivocally, doubt about it. race wars doesn't exist without John. Yeah, and all, the hard work that you see um, that you see up front um, is pales in comparison to the amount of work that John and Jessica. Um, do there, there is a team behind us? Um, clearly, That's Jessica Widenbar. Widenbar, yep. yeah, Jess. She she actually runs the show. We just don't tell her that. But <coughs> no, I keep in contact with Jessica. She's great. <laughs> Jess is amazing. But yeah, jo- look, John puts in an uh, upteen amount of hours for mm. this event. He he has a passion that um, I've not seen in anyone yet alone for an event of any type, uh, let alone for car culture in Western Australia all yeah. around. Yep. So you talk about Wild Catchem. That's where where it, it kicked off the first yep. event. The goat track, the as goat we track. lovingly call it. S- yeah. Speaking of the goat track, I, there's some. I didn't. I never went to the Wild Catchem event to mm-hmm. be honest with you, but I've seen some some video footage, and one that sticks in my mind is uh, Steve. I think it's Steve Jones driving yep. Anthony's Scarley's and Nissan thirty two GDR. Yeah, yep. and and really sketchy at the top end, and it. it highlighted i guess it highlights what you're talking about okay? yeah well with respect to the people of wild catch yeah. we're, we're talking a 1500 meter uh runway unlike albany today uh and at, at the 800 meter mark there was a significant wolf in the road so at 800 meters even even when you're doing the 800 meter roll on even when you're doing the 800 meter roll on um you would be at that point of maximum acceleration uh, rolling and your car would be upset by the wolf in the road. So those mm. that are doing a 1,000 metres, um, we could almost look at the vehicle and it would hit that point and see it skip on the yeah. road. So, yeah, it was very... Um, it was pretty much a dust bowl. I mean, we had to have a lot of dust suppression um, put into place as the event grew because being in 2013, when the event first started... Um, we had no idea what we were doing. Mm. Um, and, you know, we knew a couple of graphics guys that put the posters together. We knew some, we did some photo shoots. We got some great cars and stuff. All of a sudden, we had this, this event that had seemingly a um, professional facade. Mm. And we ran with it. Um, not enough toilets, not enough food, mm. you know, delays in the start line, you know, trying to get timing equipment that wasn't working. And, you know, guys yeah. were working throughout the night on, on the Saturday night, Friday night, just get to keep the timing system working because things were just, no one had any idea. It was mm. just, we were going to get, you know, 30 or 40 cars and we ended up getting 200. So you got 200 at that first event, isn't it? Oh, I think so. I was pretty close. I think yeah. Fire Festival, but with a runway. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, people did camp. <laughs> I like that analogy, actually. Yeah. <laughs> we did camp on, on the footy oval because there's no accommodation. I mean, yeah. you know, you've got to remember there's no, there was no supporting infrastructure. I mean, we had a council that was very supportive because we brought people into the township to spend some money. And at the end of the day, the, the township had the bottle o, it had the pub, which had skimpies on Friday night. That was the entertainment. Um, <laughs> you used to get burgers from the, the servo, uh, and that was it. Yeah. 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 Look, I mean, been in the agricultural game myself, I do Darren field days for the yep. last 25 years, and Darren's the town just before Wild Ketchum. Correct. Not, not that, not a lot different to Wild Ketchum, but yep. they hinge themselves on, on these one big events. But mm. yeah, the, the infrastructure, as you say, was, yep. wasn't there. And that was, and that was a, it was a limiting factor which you know became apparent to us. I mean, um, a good number of us guys are, and girls uh, are relatively commercially minded, so you sort of see where the event can flourish and what it's required to yeah. do that. And I think the event worked really well, but we could see that the cars were getting faster and we needed to step up um, parameters in regards to the technical aspects of the event as well um, to keep it safe. Yeah, so moving on from Wild Catchem, you mm. got you got you, you took a year off. There was a year you, you, a hiatus, as yep. Todd put it. Yeah. How did you get yourself then to Albany? How did the Albany discussion come about? Again, the influence was with John and um, more beer, more beer. Um, Kim Ledger, uh, who's close to John and myself, um, was having some discussions with John in regards to. Um, the negotiations that were underway in regards to the motorsport park for Albany mm-hmm. um, and led to a discussion with council and us being able to present a case for race wars um, and you know realistically we assumed it's going to be 12 18 months of work you know go, those application processes um, to get cars assigned car to sign off council sign off I mean we're talking about regulating bodies through government that are on a national and state level. It's not just a local township. Um, so put the presentation forward, and lo and behold, it was within a week they'd come back um, and in principle had agreed to the event. Yeah, okay. So race walls went from, it was literally, I think, I think it was April, April of 16. Yeah. And we just said goodbye to race walls while catching was no longer a, a, a valid option for us. Uh, and so we'd officially sort of put race walls to bed until further notice. And literally two weeks later, we're like, we're back. Here's race walls. Yeah, we're yeah. in Albany and yep. we have 1,800 metres and we have a tourism destination. We have wineries. We have breweries. We have... Um, ample accommodation. Ample accommodation. Mm. Uh, and you just got the long weekend in March. And it's the long weekend. You know, it just... <laughs> And it's a beautiful part of the world. It really is. You could be, you know, you go down the Middleton Beach amongst other areas of Albany. Albany is a beautiful place and you really need to discover it for more than three days. Um, but you could be literally anywhere in the world. I think, I always think of the Scottish Isles whenever I'm standing on uh, Middleton Beach. It's just so picturesque. It's, it's an absolutely amazing place in Western Australia, it really yep. is. And I, I've yep. been going to Albany on and off for a long, long time, but it's grown. It's amazing. The, the change that's happened in the last five years, I mm-hmm. would say. Yeah would be more than the last 20 years it's really accelerated and some of the stuff that they're doing down there hi this is nick from the talk and power podcast you can catch us every saturday morning from 8 30 a.m to 10 a.m on 88.5 fm we talk all things motorsports one of the things that i really noticed it was the first time i went to race wars was last year was the 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 the, the shire and what well, i call shire the city council yep. and their involvement and yep. their and the way they um spoke at, yep. at the event i was yep. actually had a stall right next to to them as well yep. and I, I just felt that you know they were really endorsing of this event yeah look you know the, the numbers are and it's 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 public knowledge um, race wars brings in excess of five million dollars over the over the weekend for for albany and that district um that's a that's a, a very very strong case mm. for solidifying the backing of events of this nature um, and Albany see that. I mean, they've got the Round the Houses event, which they've been running oh, 30 years. I'm yeah. fairly sure that Noah ran in that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the dawn of time. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, I was being nice. Uh, however, you know, they, and the, the, the motorsport community, well, the, not only the motorsport, the motoring community 
um, in Albany and surrounding regions. It's probably for, you know, per capita, it's, it's a very high percentage. You know, we, we, we're always blown away with just the sheer volume of, of competitors and entrants and uh, supporters that are motoring enthusiasts, as well as just the general public. Mm. Like the city of, the city, it's not a town, it's a city of Albany. You know, wherever you go, if, you've, if you come in, you've got a race wall shirt or hat, you know, some of the locals at some of the establishments, because we're down there a couple of times a year sometimes, um, really get to know you and they, they just love the event. They, they throw their support, you know, through thick and thin. Mm. You know, Race Wars has had a, a fairly tumultuous last 12 months going through what it's had to go through yeah. um, and come back um, bigger and better. And we have full support from council. We get full support from uh, entrants. We get full support from the spectators uh, and the city as a whole. So, um, you know, it's a it's a, a shining example of what can be done um, with the right people um, taking the right point of view. Yeah, sure, sure. Did a little, we'll get you. We'll bring you in here if that's all right. I mean, t- tell us you, you come. I know, and Todd's told me all about you as well. That you, you, you're all well credentialed. Don't worry, all, all good stuff. All well credentialed. <laughs> Garbage. But tell us about your involvement. Then you've you've come into race wars last year, I believe, was your first year. Yeah, last true? year, uh, last year, first first year on deck. Uh, been to see the event down there a couple of times. Yep. Um, great social weekend. Um, I've ruined that. Um, <laughs> now I'm completely involved, um, which is is fantastic, but. No, the, the Race Wars team is a, a growing team. Um, they're a great team, um, but they're not afraid to um, admit their limitations. So they're, they're bringing skill sets in, they're bringing new people in to, to bolster. I mean, we, we push the competitors to step up um, their games and to continually increase, but it's only fair that, that we do the same. So yeah. Race Wars as an organisation, I think, uh, would be probably three times the size uh, behind the scenes, uh, mm-hmm. as it was in the in, in its first years, is the whole event's growing, mm-hmm. um, and with it, everything has to grow. So. Yeah, yeah. No, no, fair enough. And so you 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 have a, a CAMS or I should call it Motorsport Australia background. I I do. Yeah. Um, predominant. Well, majority of the events I'd say um, in my past have been um, through CAMS or Motorsport mm. Australia. Yep. Um, I have done. Uh, events outside of uh, motorsport, um, outside of four wheels, two wheels, that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, it, it's kind of scary um, reading on here. It's kind of a bit of a resume. I, I kind of think back and uh, it's hard to remember everything I've done, but been lucky enough, um, I cut my teeth originally with off-road racing. Okay. Uh, involved yep. with the West Australian uh, Off-Road Championship um, through that was involved as an official, as a competitor, as a um, did some work on vehicles, that sort of stuff. Um, and, and that grew, meeting people and, and doing other events, doing other motorsport. I uh, got involved and over my time I've done uh, gravel rally, tarmac rally, uh, again off-road. Uh, I've done, uh, been involved with the Australasian Safari for a number of years, mm-hmm. so um, big multi-day endurance um, rally event uh, up through the the lovely northern parts of yeah. uh, of WA, um, and now luckily down to the beautiful Great Southern. Um, I've been involved in jet boats uh, yeah. with the West Coast Jet Sprint <coughs> Club. I run uh, I run a few seasons uh, of their competition down there, uh, and over the last few years, I've been involved in a number of mass participation events with uh, the likes of City of the Surf and yeah. uh, a number of riding okay. and running events yep. as well. So, I bring a broad experience. That is a Hopefully, pretty yeah, yeah. And, you, and you you need that, don't you? I mean, we can't just be all hoons and, and motorheads. I think you need to bring people from other events and some other qualifications to the board. So that's great to see that you guys are doing that. It's, we, I think it's we'd great. all like to be hoons um, mm. and drink beer. Gotta, it's all about gotta, balance. <laughs> it yeah. is. It it's is all balance. about balance, right? You, it you, is you, balance. You get older and you. You, and you understand the fundamentals. If you want to do these things, you have to put other measures in place. Yeah. Ultimately, it's it's you know event for all of us. Where it's all born out because we want to go and do it, right? We just want to go out and do it. No one else is doing it, so shit, we got to go do it. Yeah, you know. And it's just it's continued on and continued on, and you you feel obligated to carry on. Yeah, because you just see the impact that we have, and Dita has has brought such a um, focused um, requirement for it. Um, 
as I said, there's such a team that's that's surrounding us for all elements of it, be it whether it's managing the infield, managing the competitors, managing the start line, managing the safety elements, managing the vehicle recovery, the sponsors, you know, everything. That we need to have some qualified individuals, and qualified can come in any aspects, um, in place that we can rely upon. Mm. Uh, and Dieter is is great because he just pro- he just provides that that sort of benchmark to go. No, John, which happens regularly. That, that <laughs> phrase, no, John. I, I, see John <laughs> I see John referred to here as a brainchild. Um, there's a bit of a focus on the child yeah. uh, element of that. John, John takes managing. Um, love John to death, but John takes managing. And uh, that, is, that is one of my requirements over the course of the weekend. I love that guy like chocolate. Do you love that guy like he likes chocolate? Or you love that guy like chocolate? Both. Uh, both? Okay, yeah. both. I don't I know if John that well. likes to love chocolate, but. <laughs> <laughs> but I can imagine that. If, I don't know him that well. I've met him a handful of times, and yeah. uh, I can see, I can see what you're it's talking 100% about. One hundred percent passion. That's the beauty of that guy. He's just one hundred percent passion. There is just there's no BS about it. Yeah, no, fair enough. Yep. Look, tell us. I mean, when you're down there, mm. when you're when you're working, you you guys are literally working because a lot of people would think that. You're usually the directors, you're sitting in the box yep. somewhere watching the racing, and they think people uh, having a it's drink. Funny, and, the, the um, the the idea is that race wars makes all this money and we just kick back and you know click back checking the folding just going yeah we're man we're making some cash it doesn't make money <laughs> right if it breaks even we're doing okay well like, we celebrate for breaks even yeah so you know we we've um we've all invested um in the event for the good of the event yeah. and we continue to do so yeah. um but yeah to 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 gloss over it we literally the Outside of all the work that we do leading up to the event, which is it's a solid six months worth of work when it's activated, mm. to the weekend we all arrive basically on a Wednesday, mm. um, and you start work at the airport. Just starting on the infrastructure elements. Just we don't get access to the airport uninhibited until Friday, late Friday afternoon, and the event kicks off at eight a.m. on Saturday morning. Mm. Right. Yep. So prior to that, we are posturing with all of the equipment bumping people in and out and you understand this is an active airport that is under operation it's under national jurisdiction it's not it's not as a local small grass airstrip and we have to have um escorts bringing vehicles in and out and it's um it's very 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 (laughs) involving i can certainly vouch for that because i had to be escorted in and escorted out on the friday last year as well and you know it was only from here to I don't know, it was about 75 metres, and yeah. yeah, I had to be escorted. So, And if it's not, look, if it wasn't for the volunteers, we have uh, an amazing support crew that are Albany based as well. Yeah. Shout out to Uncle Mick, he knows who he is, and crew. And um, the amount of work that, that has to go in and the time that it has to go in for it to all come together, we don't have the, the, the luck of having three or four days just yeah. to put everything together. We, it literally comes in, we're, we're sitting by the, the, the road side of the runway. Um, set back and it's sort of like 3.59 p.m. on the Friday afternoon. It hits 4 o'clock and it's game on. <laughs> yeah. And you've yeah. only got three hours of light mm. left and this is going out there, getting a timing system in place, testing that t- that timing system, PA system, everything. It's all got to get set up within three hours. Yeah. Um, it's intense. Yeah. And the thing is we don't finish till, I don't know, 10 o'clock at night on a, on a Friday and then we're back there 5.36 a.m. Mm. on Saturday. Yep. And so for us on this Saturday, um, cash days won't finish till 11 o'clock at night. Yeah, okay. And then we're back there again same time Sunday morning. Mm. So, yeah, come Monday when the sprint is running and we're not directly running the sprint this year, I think um, we'll be enjoying probably a bit of downtime and, and a beer on, on the deck of High Blow watching the the cars go up Mount Adelaide certainly but yeah look it's a big it's a big involvement and you can make fun of Todd yeah we right. make fun of everyone look yeah. you know um, Dieter and I are not uh, we, we are not proficient behind a microphone or a camera you know we do these things and the, you know the, the live um, vids that John and I used to do all the time it was because there was no one else to do yeah. it so you're yeah. like well I gotta, we got to do something mate I'm actually well, quite surprised that we've been let out to do this sort of thing without uh, Jess, without Race Wars radios yeah. without, without hugging and rigs um, well, they yeah. are our voices of, yeah. of Race Wars yeah. so I think we managed to sneak this one past him, didn't we? Well, Riggs apparently had to go to the vet. I think he had to go to the vet, not the dog, but we'll leave that for another discussion another day. Just a question without notice. It's not on the run sheet, but um, 
the airport, you might raise an interesting point there. A lot of people think that the airport gets shut down for the entire week, and that's not strictly the case. The airport nope. is still open for emergencies. Well, it's, yep. Yeah, and we, we actually had to uh, deal with this last year. It was four uh, times, was it? Uh, there were three, three, or four three times, yeah, yeah. Three times yeah. uh, four aircraft. So um, the the wonderful people at uh, Royal Flying Doctors yeah. um, do allow us to use that runway. Um, we use one of the two runways. <laughs> um, we have a process in place where we're advised that uh, the wrong flying doctors are headed in, <laughs> uh, at which point we'll cease operations, <laughs> um, hand the airport back to <clears throat> the awesome staff there at, uh, at Albany. Um, they'll clear that other runway, make sure that uh, there's no debris where we've been crossing yep. it. Yep. Uh, Raw flying doctors will come in. Um, they'll do what they need to do. Um, whoever's in that situation is more important than us mm, yeah. playing around in a runway yep. um, we are there for for fun uh and then yeah once they're once they're left uh once they're well clear of the airspace then we're uh yeah we we take back over again and um and have our way with their runway but mm. yeah it's uh happened a few times and there's no issues with it I yeah mean, you're in a community the community's supporting you so when the mm. community need it yeah they need it but I think it's important that we get that message out there. People yeah. think that you know the run. That's it. The world stops. It's that's not the case. You know, there was. I, I know. You know, and we also you have to leave enough time in the event of an emergency that Correct. plane needs to turn around and come back. That's right. It's, yeah. it's, 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 you can't start well, we racing. Get a, no, we get a we get a uh, we get a fifteen minute. Um, sorry, we usually get about a thirty minute advice that they're going to be coming in. Yeah. Uh, fifteen minutes out, we uh, we cease operations. Yep. Uh, giving the airport staff enough time to clear the runway. Hmm. Um, the RFDS are on the ground as long as they're on the ground. Uh, once they've got their patient and they're back in the air, um, we we have a 15-minute window where once they're outside of 15, um, it's easier for them to land at the next airport up than it is yeah. to turn around. So yeah. we're, we're clear again at that 15-minute hmm. that mark and then we're, we're good. Yeah. No, that's good. That's, it's important that people know that anyway. Yeah. Todd, I'll let you take over here. You got it's your favourite event. Well, one of them. Um, Kebabs and cars. I was talking about. Well, yeah. I, mean, I was going to say, Jamie. I mean, I'm in the notes here, I said I see you standing on the runway. Like last year, I think yeah. you and I passed looks half a dozen times, and you yeah. were just a busy man all weekend. Yeah. But people also don't realise Kebabs and cars. You yeah. sort of run a lead-up show. Yeah. Like, how did that come about? Because we knew. Oh, look, this is. Uh, Okay, so Kebabs and Cars has been a discussion that I've been having, John's been having, I think Car Enthusiasts have been having in their head since the dawn of time. Um, and really, it was what has evoked the coffee and car culture prior to coffees and cars really you know, ingraining itself in Perth, or internationally now. Um, and so the idea was, we all like vehicles, regardless of slow, fast, loud, old, new, exotic, classic whatever it doesn't matter we just we love cars okay and the capacity to drive cars on the road and enjoy them, there are there's so many now boundaries put in place and look at the end of the day they have to be there because you are you are sharing the road with with commuters and so you need to have an outlet somewhere where you can go and enjoy it and and talk about it with with you know like-minded individuals and so um it actually came about where Kebabs and Cars um, officiated was in the early days, um, Race Wars had uh, Motul as a leading sponsor. Mm. All great to deal with, by the way. And um, part of the, the obligations for Race Wars was that we needed to have a public interest event that could showcase Motul products, etc. So um, initially, way back when, I was organising a, uh, a display in Forest Chase. Um, and we'd get a dozen cars, we'd put it out to some of the competitors and people that knew within industry, if you like, or within the, the car scene per se, and um, got some cars, a whole diversity of cars, because from, from my perspective, it had to showcase everything. There was no point in having just, just a hot rod or just a tarmac rally car or just a drag car. Well, what's the point of that? That doesn't really um, explain what we're trying to do. The diversity is key, right? Um, and it got to a point where that was great. It met the obligations, but it really didn't didn't really scratch the surface. 
um, and having been involved in car cruises and small car events and everything else, we just sort of sat down and went, you know, obviously with the advent of digital interface now, you know, social media, your phone is pretty much your, your an extension of yourself, if you like. Mm. Um, you're, you're tapping into everyone. So we utilised that those mediums and just went, okay, Race Wars has an audience. Let's celebrate that audience. Let's celebrate it in Perth. Shannon's got involved and just went, we've got a new headquarters. What do you guys reckon about using this? And you know, one thing led to another. Um, good old Tim Kershaw, good personal friend of mine. He's um, better at making posters than I am online. Well, mm. not, not that much better these days. I've learned more. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, he, and um, we just put the call out. We spoke to a couple of vendors and operators, got some support, um, and Kavaz and Cars is born. It's yep. free. There's no limitations. Bring whatever you've got. We want to see it. Mm. And last year we had 1,000 cars. Wow, a thousand cars. For, for those in uh, our, demog- let's say our demographic sitting around the table here, uh, it, it's kind of an adult grown-up version of um, Leech Highway Maccas on a Thursday night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, or if you live north river, it would have been Belt and Maccas. Yep. yep. There you go. Yep. <laughs> Kingsway. 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 Nick knows what I'm on about. Yeah. Right. Thursday he's, night. He's VN, he's VN Group A. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yes, the group A front end. <laughs> you, you might be letting on what demographic we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. But that's so just that's the 22nd of Feb. That's Saturday, the 22nd of Feb. So the Correct. week before. So it's and always Shannon's. Shannon's headquarter yeah. in um, Beckenham, isn't it? Beckenham, yeah. Cannington. Yep. Um, it's always the Saturday night prior to the, the Race Wars weekend. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. All right. Now, scrutineering. Did we'll bring you back in here. I know you're not, um, you're not personally scrutineering the vehicles, um, but t- talk us a bit through what what you guys are actually looking for or looking at in terms of scrutineering in the lead up. So, entrants are in a position where they can bring their vehicles to Northside Nissan. Is that correct? In the lead up to the event. And, yeah. So and- three. Uh- First three Saturdays of February, so mm-hmm. uh, we're now past the, the first one, uh, first of Feb. Um, we're looking at 8th and 14th. Yep. 15th. You've got two left. Don't have the calendar in my head at the moment. No, you're right. Um, I'm, I'm yeah. good. Yep, cool. All right. Um, so, um, Northside Nissan, a uh, great sponsor of ours. Um, they let us use some of their vehicles for the weekend, but uh, their service manager, uh, we sit in an office and the door says service manager, so I'm not 100% sure, but... Uh, Jai Philp, he's our uh, chief scrutineer. Um, Jai's very kindly talked Northside into letting us use their workshop area. Mm-hmm. Um, Jai and his, uh, and his team of uh, mechanics there um, pretty much put every vehicle on, on hoist um, yep. and we have a bit of a go over it. Um, it's There's particular things you look at when A, you're using a runway. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's different to... Uh, it's different to your average racetrack or, or street. Um, there are things the runway's susceptible to, so we take more of an onus to make sure that we're not going to damage the runway in any way, um, that the vehicles are safe to be doing the speeds that they're now getting to. Mm. Um, and uh, for those familiar with our with our regs, they, they kind of step through as you go faster. Yep. You need to step up the safety. Um, there is a bit of an honor works. system in in, yeah. in places as well a bit because of, of that, but you can see from the size of the turbo or the headers of the the, the tire that's going on the back of the car. Well, we sort of don't understand where you're going. We're also that. we're also lucky in that the standard motorsport uh, or motoring enthusiast um, way of life is they're going to overstate what they're capable of. Mm. So <laughs> that honor system kind of works in our favour. I have the rears. I'm going to do I'm 300 going, down the thousand. There's no yes, reason. Yes, you are. Yeah, yes, you exactly. Are. Of course you are. So <laughs> it's <laughs> it's great in that respect. But um, as things step up, we, we check more and more. Mm. Um, some of that stuff safety related. A lot of it's just mechanical. I mean, um, you can understand the importance of wheel bearings not being loose at 300 yeah. kilometres an hour. Yeah. Um, we can't have components fail on the runway. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the well, worst we, things we could do is is an oil spill on the runway. That's yeah, a, yeah. that's a king. So we're we're looking for those sort of things. Mm-hmm. Um, it's also a double check for the for the competitors. They get yeah. to make sure the vehicles are ready early enough, yeah. um, so that they are ready for race wars, and we're mm-hmm. not trying to do things last minute. Sure. So I mean, in 
Last year's record was set 353 from Willow, 351 from yep. Willow Racing, the yep. Nissan G- GDR, beautiful looking car. Yeah. Ed wasn't too far behind him, but I don't think he got a thousand crack, Ed, or he may have, but he wasn't, I think he went 330 odd, Jose. Yep. If you can tell us, tell us, but mm-hmm. what are you guys expecting to see this year? What, what are we... I expect oh. to have my eyes shut. <laughs> <laughs> I think Willow really set a very, very high benchmark. And so he's coming back, correct me if I'm wrong. He's coming back. Yeah. And, okay, uh, random fact is that that car wasn't 100% healthy. I mean, none of the cars are 100% healthy. <laughs> yeah. when they're put- they all claim they are. Yeah. yeah. All but, I, I mean, I was there and he just goes, yeah, she's a, she's pushing a little bit of oil through the turbo. And like, yeah, sure is, mate. And then he started up and was like, is that a diesel? So, um, <laughs> he had the turbo air freighter to Albany last year. Yeah. Was that, was yeah. That they, they had the, uh, they had the big girl panty turbos sent over. Yeah. Um, they were never actually fitted to the car. Oh, okay. Um, the Sorry. engine wasn't as healthy as it could have been. Yep. Um, I mean, so he was going to have a crack at the, the sprint as well. Yep. So we're talking, you know, he was going to detune at, say, you know, 1,200 horse- horsepower and then have a crack at the sprint. <laughs> so it just, it was only purely, it was only because of he ran out of time because he had to get back to Adelaide in time mm-hmm. that he actually couldn't do it. But um, I think, I mean, if you look, look, if we just look at the, the competitors and it'll, it'll tell you where we've been over the last few years. Um, you know, back in back in the wild catching days, we had oh, it was Lakatori cracked what two sixty odd? Is that in, where in we a, were? In what a lot of people call a taxi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Oh, you know, awesome it, fast. Yeah, two seventy five. Sorry, two seventy five. Yeah, you know, two seventy five on that goat track. Mm. Real drive car. We're not talking a, uh, an all drive GTR. This is a real drive F six. The old mighty Barra. Yeah, you know, mm. nothing like an iron block taking a lot of boost. Um, and it's pretty. It, you know, it, it's been. Um, 275, 306, 322, 324, 334, 351. You know, it's, yeah. it's moved every year. So it's now become tour a mile an hour is no longer the aim. That is the standard. Mm. So 330Ks, you know, I don't know, we'd probably see a half dozen guys crack that. We may have um, some of those guys trying for 350. Yeah. Um, there is capacity, um, especially in a certain HSV GTO, that if you can get some power down, that guy can make 350 look slow. Mm. Um, scares the shit out of us, but yep. at the same time, you know, we're, we're looking we're looking forward to it all at the same time. You know, the, this, yep. the, the level of physics that are being pushed now, um, and ultimately the horsepower element isn't all that it's about. It's getting that power down, and there's limitations. Yeah, there is yep. severe limitations in that. Yeah. Okay. At the end of the day, it's still a runway. Yeah. There's some. Yeah. There's. I mean, and that that shows dividends in the guys that are peddling these 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 monstrosities down the runway. You know, they're they're strapped in, and you know, as Dieter alluded to, we we've, we've got to keep a very very stringent um, requirement on those cars and their safety. Not just for the competitors, and it's not just for those starting the start line. There's, we've also got, you know, three or four thousand uh, spectators that are watching these guys belting down so those cars and their safety is paramount to everyone involved mm, yeah. you know it doesn't just stop with the competitor and um yeah i urge spectators i urge spectators to go a fair way down and just watch the cars and get yep. a real feel yeah. of the speed i did that last year yep. and it'll it'll blow your mind how fast these cars are really starting like you say 350 and i think for a lot of people they're probably not 350 but yeah, yeah. that is hoiking yeah. at the at the quarter mile where you'll actually be able to get down to as a spectator you would be seeing 80 percent of that car's speed mm. um they're putting all of it on early uh the rest of that push 600 air. meters of the runway is is using horsepower to push air out of the way and that doesn't happen as easy so mm. um it's it's impressive to see that close to the start line. Yeah, it's um, it is it going is. that quick. It is, yeah. it's, and it's great. And it's great um, to be there. I mean, I urge people to get down there. Hi, this is Nick from the Talk and Power podcast. You can catch us every Saturday morning from eight thirty a.m. to ten a.m. on eighty eight point five FM. We talk all things motorsports. Look, speaking of entertainment, we got. Todd wrote this, and I don't know if I should be reading this. He's written, besides the runway entertainment, this year sees the return of everyone's favourite DJ, photographer, and male model. I didn't know Todd was a male model. (laughs) (laughs) Or a DJ. (laughs) 
So Jordan, Jordan Lease, that is, he's he's putting on cash days. Now, he did that a few years ago. He did that Correct, two yeah. years ago, didn't yep. he? Yeah. Yep. yep. So what, what can we expect to see here from the BTG mechanical cash days? A Jordan probably with a backpack and a tank top. Yeah, no uh, sleeves. Definitely no sleeves. Definitely, de- definitely no sleeves. A big brim hat. Yeah, yep. he'll, there'll be a fishing rod in the back of whichever vehicle he's bringing down. Um, but the, look, no, realistically, um, Jordan brings the noise when it comes to cash days. Um, I mean, that guy's larger than life. Oh, uh, you know, he's a yeah. stalwart of, of car culture in Western mm. Australia. Um, and so it's, it's, it's great to have that personality there um, to drive that and really bring what is... Um, that run what you brung, no prep, eighth mile, lift those wheels, um, and steer with the rear. And he brings, you know, he brings that persona that that, that event really um, yeah. gels with. Yeah, yeah. no, uh, that, I'm really looking forward to that. Mm. Now, just explain to people cash days. It's a uh, a buy in. Correct me if I'm wrong. Correct. So there's uh, Dita. You want to expand on that? I was going to say it's um, loosely based on. The uh, street outlaws, which yep. you may or may not have seen on TV, mm-hmm. um, similar sort of concept. Um, run what you bring, buy yep. in, buy in, yep. buy in. Uh, line up. It's a an eighth mile uh, standing start. Yep. Um, and I'm pretty sure we've got Jordan starting it on the uh, on the light. He's been working on his. On the flash, so he's going to be walking oh, yeah. backwards yeah, yeah. Flash and flash it. He's just going to walk back and then flex, and the light and the light comes just on. automatically yeah, yeah. comes on. Um, <laughs> I have it on good authority. He's been working on leg day. Um, that means <laughs> skipping, so it's going to be well proportioned. I think um, Jordan listens too to the podcast. So. Fantastic. Hi, hi Jordan. <laughs> I yeah. expect nothing less. I <laughs> <laughs> lefty. Uh, so yeah. Uh, I don't believe this year we've allowed any electric cars. Uh, sorry, Mark Conica, but. Um, it's cheating. <laughs> it's cheating. Um, However, I did. I had. I was actually uh, listening to a podcast the other day. I think Matt Farrer was going on it. And then, if they get enough launches on an electric car, they they depower. They fall off. Yeah, fall off a cliff pretty quickly. So, yeah. just get them to do a couple of punch launches. Yeah. And then just move Mate, um, one of the biggest, uh, one of the massive matchups we are waiting for at Cash Days, though. Um, Huggy, yep. uh, in the Silver Slug. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. Huggy's been prepping this thing down at uh, down at the motorplex. Yep. Over the quarter mile. Yep. It's got an uh, LS2 now, isn't it? I think it's LS2. Yeah. LS2. Uh, and I think he's uh, he's in the process of installing the uh, the gappy gas. Psst. Uh, uh-huh. So Gosh. so Huggy Huggy has thrown down the gauntlet. Yep. Mm. Uh, to Jonathan Murray. Yep. And the mighty mighty the AU. The now King Garage AU Falcon. Oh, King Garage AU Falcon. Garage <laughs> AU Falcon. You've it's done this while he's out of the country, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, for yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the, only problem, the only problem is is that it's missing a gearbox. So. Well, it's got one it's, in there. It just doesn't work all the time. It's well, not it's got all the gears. There's a bit of, bit of work to do, but uh, the matchup we're waiting for is uh, Huggy v. John. Yep. Um, we were hoping the guys had bought uh, bought the game last year with, um, with Granny Pants Camry, but... Uh, they didn't stack up, so hopefully Mate, Huggy's nothing, got more to offer. Nothing, <laughs> nothing, nothing can beat the AU. Nothing. So the challenge is on. No, we're looking forward to it. We're really looking forward to it. Mm. Now, just touch on the Albany Albany Sprint. This man sitting across from me, he'll be participating in his Evo Five. So bring it. He's he's looking forward to it, Todd. Mm. You're you're set, Todd. No, no. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, there's a uh, there's a lay by or a, a pull over bay about halfway up. Yeah, um, hey. pretty good spectator pop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey. No, I'm actually in the process of making the car safe, which I always bang on about, believe it or not. But and I've been in touch with Ivan at Go Gear. Yeah. And he's given me a slap over the head, which he always does. So hello, <laughs> Ivan. I know he listens as well. At least he's not bringing a gun. <laughs> <laughs> we can't say that. <laughs> but um, so just sorting your sights. Sort a few things out, and I'll be down there. So uh. yeah, so this year um, the Tiger West crew, Ross Tapper and Co, uh, will be running um, the Monday Sprint. Yep. So yep. tell us a bit about the the, mon- the Monday Sprint. That's that's completely different location, Middleton Beach. You're heading up the hill towards the Anzac Memorial, correct? Yeah, yeah. Which is so we we stage at the top of the hill in the uh, in the Anzac Memorial car park. Yep. Um, this year, the um, city of Albany have actually um, closed the facility for the day. Wow! Um, we, we pretty much have free reign of uh, of Man Adelaide, which is is fantastic. Um, as uh, Jamie was saying earlier, we uh, we start off down the bottom, mm. uh, out the front of the Hybler, 
yep. Bible Hotel on Middleton Beach. Quite the spectacle too. Quite that start the line. Yep. <laughs> they um, paint if, those lines very well. Yeah, and if, you get, if you get bored of the car, the cars, the other uh, spectacle is up on the balcony. Yes. Um, that's always a bit of a laugh. Yeah. Um, but the run up um, Mount Adelaide is, is fantastic. It's it a is. it's a lovely piece of road. Um, Jonathan Murray came to me um, shortly after. 2018 race wars um, with this idea. Uh, now, as I've said, a lot of my job is to pacify John mm. uh, and to say, John, that's a, that's a great idea. Um, and we humour John. No, John. And then we move on. <laughs> um, yeah, John, if you can get some funding out of Jess, um, we'll make it happen. Um, that's, a, that's a fairly standard one. But um, John came to me with this idea and it was um, it's a magic piece of road. Mm. Um, and it it's fast. It needed using, and it's, it's fast. quick. It's very quick. Um, so we we set to work to see whether we could um, whether we could make it happen. Yep. Um, worked with uh, a lot of the team I've worked with over a number of years in in trying to get that sort of event off the ground. Um, got the backing we needed. Got the uh, the track licenses sorted, and um, and sort of went about it. That the issue we had, and the, the main reason. Um, Target West are now involved is um, from the moment we released it we realised we created an absolute behemoth mm. um, the thing is massive um, it and sells out in a week it, it, not even the first year it sold out we had 100 entries in 45 minutes yeah um, it was incredible so the issue that that creates is we've got this massive event that we we kind of do on the Saturday and Sunday mm. um, and we'd left ourselves a window of about six o'clock Sunday evening uh, till about nine o'clock on Monday morning, we'll start running cars to set up this um, this enormous yeah. uh, event. Can you take into consideration um, that we're all going to be well rested and sober mm. <laughs> after a massive night at the Due South um, for our presentations for race? Well, so it, it just became this bigger than Ben Hur thing that if it was going to continue and it was going to continue uh, the way it should, the way it deserves. Uh, we need to bring a team of people in who um, can take an event that size and and run it. And yeah. Target West are the they're the people to do it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the um, the team there, um, Ross, Jan, Dave, they've launched at it. Um, they love the idea and they've they've run with it. So it's going to be a massive event um, again, stepping everything up. Yeah, it's certainly. A, 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 look. Um, irrespective of race wars, I think the Mount Adelaide um, sprint is a permanent fixture on the motorsport calendar for yeah. WA, yeah, okay. without doubt. Yeah, it is. I, I really enjoy. I really enjoyed that uh, last yeah. year, and I I didn't have accommodation for the Monday evening. I was coming back to Perth, so I I left at about two o'clock, I think it was. But yeah, I kind of regretted that. I think I should have stayed for the entire Monday. Oh, watched. look, it's so good because you, you I mean, especially in the staging area and, and the pits per se, um, down on, on Middleton Beach, you just, as a spectator, you, you're walking through the cars, yeah. you've got those those senses, the smells, the sounds, the vibrations from the vehicles, you mm. know, idling away through to the, the start line. It really is an interactive experience um, and the setting is phenomenal so yeah. you know it, it's got everything going for it it yeah. really does yeah, yeah. a big yeah. one big one for the spectators is uh, it, it's not the same cars you're going to see all day saturday and sunday running that's right running straight yeah. down yeah. the runway so yeah um currently of the 110 entrants um we've got 20 that yeah. are they're doing both um and they're not the heavy they're not the heavy hitters they're not the eds they're not the mm. um the willows where it, it's just a completely different type of car yeah so yeah. it's an it's an awesome array of cars um classics modern cars um i'm not sure where yours fits Todd. classic or i think it's classic no i'm modern i think you think i think Are you, is it <laughs> just, <laughs> just <laughs> it would be just it actually annoys me i mean modern but anyway that's not a story yeah <laughs> but the um yeah the, the the spectrum of cars that are available to see uh and you can get up nice and close in the pit area Yep. Um, you can get up nice and close in the viewing areas. Um, the team at Targa West uh, have opened up a, a few more uh, spectator points for those that oh, really? have been okay. here in the last yep. couple of years. Um, just up above the pub, the which is the other pub? 
Yeah, the um, three anchors. It's three anchors. Yeah, three anchors, yep. which is so. Uh, yeah, and yes. there's a, an area at the back where yeah. you can where you can walk around. There's actually a walkway that goes all the way up, uh, parallel to to um, Mount Adelaide all the way through. Oh, right. Yeah, correct. So there's going to oh, be a wow. spectator, spectator area up at uh, behind the three anchors, uh, and there's also going to be a spectator area up at the um, at the lookout. Yeah, on, okay. Uh, on Marine. So yeah, it's going to be uh, more to see, more to do. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm looking forward to that. I, the the team at um, Stance, Stance Royalty, Royalty sorry, yeah, Stance yeah. Royalty. Jay got and some, Jackie and crew. Yeah, got some really great video footage of that last year, the the, the hill climb. And um, if you haven't seen it, head to the Race Wars Facebook page and catch that video there. Let's yeah, some oh, look, um, Stance Royalty crew, they've been involved um, on a, an official basis last year. And again, we brought them back in this year. Mm. Um, and they've really, you know, followed our mantra of step your game up. And the, the, the media and the content that these guys are able to generate and the angle of which they can they can view you what the perspective of what we're trying to achieve yeah. and be able to translate that into a into a medium that you know, the videos and the the race wars radio videos and content that you see the vlogs etc um that's all them yeah you know, we yeah, sit yeah. down and we'll, we'll, we'll brainstorm a couple mm-hmm. of things and go this is what we want to do guys but in the end of the day you have that flavor go yeah. with it mm-hmm. and yeah. you know it's just, again they're enthusiasts themselves yeah so it just it just it, yeah, it works so well mm. Speaking of social media, the, the team, the Race Wars Radio guys, they, they weren't able to make it tonight. Yep. But tell us, like, what's their, their... I think those two guys really work well with each other and uh, their banter between both of them, yeah. even at the track. But I think yeah. their job is much bigger than that, isn't it? It's not just commentating on no, the day, is it? It's uh, the lead-up to the event. They are, they are the mascots yeah. for Race Wars, right? They, I mean, they, they add another element to the face of Race Wars. There's, there's all our, us individuals, but Huggy and, and, and Riggs... Um, certainly, look, those guys need actually need their own radio program. If there was a community morning breakfast station that needed mm-hmm. some some commentary, they're the guys. They just they bounce off each other so yeah. well. They're articulate when they want to be. They can dumb it down when they need to be. Their, their choice of word and their, their commentary and be able to read a situation and, and maximise opportunities that present them um, is an, is natural for them. Mm. So, and it was just I don't even know how it came about. I mean, we ended up getting, I think it was in the wild catchment days, and um, they'll correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but because we had um, a PA system and we just got the, I think the PA and everything was all at the start line, as it has always been, um, and those guys always just had a banter between them, so we just gave them some mics. And just, yeah. And you know, it's like, what do you want to do? I went, I don't know, just talk some shit. And literally, that's what they do. Yeah. And... <laughs> You know, it's always great to listen to Riggs on the Sunday morning because he's been out of Studio 146 uh, on the <laughs> Saturday night and hasn't slept and he's just had, he's just enjoyed himself and he's hoarse before the day's even begun. So, yeah. you know, there's all these elements that just, it just makes race wars every year. It's fantastic. But they don't stop. That's the thing. Like every car that went down the track, there was yep. some sort of yep. description of what was happening yep. and, and, and they yep. did not stop those two guys. No. And, and again, it's all passion based. Yep. It's, 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 not, it's not forced. It's not, it's not where they need to try and come up with something for the, for the fact of, of filling in airtime. Sure. You know, it requires that from an event, but, it's all passion. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I feel I definitely get it from those two. I really do, and I think they do a magnificent job. Mm. I guess one of the questions that we need to ask: where to from here after this year's event? Like, well, look, it, I think you know. Before we even get to that, I think we've been talking about the competitors predominantly in the event as a whole. Um, but ultimately, this event doesn't happen if the spectators don't come and watch it, mm, right? Yeah. And you need to be able to get that interaction with with the spectators, uh, and as we always do um, with the infield, um, we have Wilson Brewing Company again this year. They've got the big DJ set up. They'll have you know sixty odd meters of prime footage in a licensed area um, with some food offerings and you know they've got a cavalcade of options in regards to the brewing product that they do sure um, they'll be doing the race wars beer again um, which is a fantastic drop uh, as well as having you know those family those family orientated um, events that jess has been um, universal in organizing with with sarah um, 
usually it's a bouncy castles or it's um, an animal farm type interaction or something like that there's always there's something there as well as with, with our sponsors and and the commercial um displays and the like for products whether it's from the local region or it's perth based motoring based whatever it is mm. um interaction and diversity is key right yep. and that's you know we're talking about kebabs and cars and, you know well, how does that all come it's just diversity mm. so what do we do and how do we involve more and more people so it's not just a competitor's event and you know john and i have been you know we've been babbling on about how we can what what else can we do you've got a, a council that's very proactive and want and want to go down that garden path with you how can we bring more people that more bums on seats come and stay within the township get them to stay here longer um expand our, our horizons in relation to um interaction um and one of those things is having um we had been looking about the uh was it auto auto classica motor classica i can't remember now Motor Classica. The Motor Classica, which was to get, you know, vehicles that could drive through the city mm. centre, whether they're race cars, show cars, drag cars, you know, full-blown vehicles that can't see the road for whatever purposes, whether a burnout car or whatever else. Um, and it just gives, you know, another level of, of interaction for a, the public to say, see these sort of vehicles that you don't see on the road. They're not allowed to go on the road because um, illegally they're, they're, they're not. Um, and see them driving down the streets. They may be given, you know, a permit to, or, or allowed a, a route to be able to drive along for certain hours on, on say, a Saturday or a Sunday. Mm. So we're working towards the potential of running something like that, um, which again it brings it outside of just the race walls. Race walls as an, as an event is maxed out. There's no, there's, there's yeah. not much more we can do. There's only so many runs you can get in a day. There's only so many competitors you can get through a lineup. Um, so you know that event as a whole um, is, is is at max capacity. So you know bringing the sprint, bringing Dita's uh, expertise in regards to that last year, uh, and fine fine tuning that for this year's event, bringing cash days back. Um, we have you know a fair bit of diversity for race wars, mm. um, and you don't want to lose sight of the fact that race wars is a grassroots event. We still yeah. are, you know, we really yeah. are. We don't, you know, we all have full time jobs. We all have families. We we are doing a lot outside of this. This is all purely out of our affection for, you know, WA car culture as a whole. Mm. Uh, and we want to expand on that. Um, so you don't want to lose that, um, I don't know, that patina, that, you know, that little little level of disorganisation. Yeah. Not quite knowing that, just that little level of of, of stress that just doesn't quite let go. We don't, want, go. To, we don't want to overcomplicate it. No. Yeah, At the yeah. end of the day, yeah. we want to give you the opportunity to pull your car up on one end of a runway and aim for the other mm. yep. Yep. yep you know what i mean like it's a there's a simplicity to that and we don't want to ruin that by trying to over yeah. complicate it yeah so it's everything that surrounds that that yeah. that grows so i guess if it's not broken don't fix it is the old yeah. saying yeah so, yep. and look yep. we, you know we, we love cars mm. so anything we can do to expand on that sure we're up for it yep now tell us i'm sure there's a a list of sponsors a mile long but go for it if you want to btg mechanical we know that was one of them for yeah cash days. look i don't even know if i've got a full full list um, while you're looking at the list so btg looking after um the cash days mm -hmm. uh new sponsor on this year for um for kebabs and cars king garage yep uh that's our royalty link and uh, oh and that's right yeah king, king pellucci sitting over here <laughs> um, and again that you know what that and that that's a, a business that um i've been um, toying with for 15 odd years uh, and it's it's you know in short it's cars and coffee every day mm. car storage solutions so yep. that's launching in um, hopefully April of this year but yep. yeah so keep keep tuned for that mm. uh, big thanks to ASA for coming on board this year yep. Um, yep and the backing and the work they put in in a, sh in a very short uh, space of time to uh, to come up to speed with our event and yep. um, they kind of get what we're doing so and they get what we're trying to do Mm -hmm. um, so massive thanks for the backing there. Um, uh, Nankang Motorsport, and the Trident Motorsport guys, um, Nankang Motorsport tyres, obviously. Um, they're also uh, bringing the 2020 Monster Truck experience back to Albany. They are. Yeah. Oh, I met those, I mean those gentlemen actually. Yeah, yeah great yeah. guys. They're great yeah. guys. So yep. we've got two monster trucks. They've got the monster truck that takes people for rides. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
and as well as having the monster truck shows which will be carrying on over the course of the saturday and sunday as we did at last year's event yep. so we're expanding further yeah. Al- Albany is always a good start I'm because so, you know they're letting us have the event yeah. there. Yeah, massive, massive <laughs> thanks to the amazing South Coast, and it is like we were saying before, it is an amazing South Coast. It is definitely um, yeah. awesome place to visit, um, especially on that March one weekend. But uh, if you can't get there, then uh, MMIT Consulting, Thrifty, uh, Storage King, Bentley. What's with the King? We just power to the King. It's, it's royalty, royalty, man. Royalty, I mean, royalty. Nick, okay. Nick right. already predisposed to it. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Prestige Partners, Chartered Accountants. Uh, big thanks to Northside Nissan again for uh, for coming on board. Uh, Jono and the team at Nankang Motorsport. Uh, WTF Autos, uh, Mantic Clutch. Um, the wild, wild people out at Wildcat Racing. <laughs> um, they always put on a show, and they they are they are fantastic for interaction with members of the public, and they'll take people for rides as long as they have got fuel in the tank. They're they're a great. Crew. That's so, that's Chris Caruso. Chris, Chris Caruso. Caruso in the, uh, that, that guy is the motorsport ambassador uh, for Australia. If you think that you're an enthusiast, there. you pale into comparison with uh, with Chris. He's been around a long time, Chris. He has, yep. and he's fantastic jag that most people will know. Yeah. But um, this year. He's bringing both the Corvette uh, and the Viper down. The wow. mighty Viper. Wow. Out. That car is just something else. Uh, Auto One, um, massive team there down at Albany. They are uh, big Auto One store. Yeah. One. Yep. Big um, supporters. Wilson Brewing. So again, Jamie's saying the, uh, the Wilson's Bar. That uh, is definitely going to be the place to be. Yeah. Uh, especially on Saturday night during cash days. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, we have security amazing. alerted. <laughs> 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 and we're not giving John a guest pass this time, are we? Yeah. Um, RSA, they are the purveyors of engineering. Um, they are engineering our tire warming facility oh, wow. prior to, so burn, basically the burnout pads. The pad, yep. Because wow. we can't, we can't, we can't, burn we can't up, do yeah, anything yeah. on the tarmac. We have to put steel plates down. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we got That's Mac, right. Mac, no, Mac go Track, who are vehicle tracking facilities. Um, yeah, if you own a fleet of cars, uh, if you own a, a nice fleet of cars, Jamie, yeah. um, you need to talk to the boys at Mac Track about knowing where they are at all times. Uh, GT Graphics, um, Gav, massive thanks to Gav for all the uh, stickers, all the stickers, all the decals, and all the vehicles. That's that's Gav oh, and that's a big job, his plotting one. machine in his shed. Uh, and he constantly, constantly churns that stuff out for for at least two weeks prior to our uh, scrutineering. So yeah, okay. And we know because he tells us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mac, Mac is Albany. Yep. Um, is probably not a more frequented place by the uh, race horse team. It Quadruple is, cheeseburgers. It is yeah. the only thing open when we're on the way to the track, and it's the only thing open when we're on the way home. So um, that kind of lets you know how long our days are, but. Uh, yeah, massive thanks to Macca's Albany for coming on board again. Yeah, and one other thing also in regards to um, uh, over the course of the weekend, uh, Heli West helicopter rides are back on. Yeah, that's going to be cool. Um, if you thought the amazing South Coast was amazing from the ground, mm. um, get yourself in the seat yeah. of a chopper because that is something else. Um, doing joy flights over the weekend, uh, have a look at the runway. Yeah. Uh, have a look at the runway all in one bit it's the only place you can see both ends of it at mm-hmm. the same time yeah um so yeah come down get yourself up in the chopper uh they do a bit of a bit of a joy flight around you'll be able to see the uh see the coast and and the lovely town of Albany. it's uh, it's an amazing place yeah. we're looking forward to it Let's just give one quick rundown for Race Wars then. So we're, we're talking the Saturday previously, this February the 22nd at Shannon's in Beckenham. Uh, so kebabs, kebabs and Cars. Kebabs and Cars. That kicks, that kicks really Race Wars off, really. Yeah, that's the, that's the, the, the launch, yeah, if you yeah. like. I mean, if you, your scrutineering leads up to it, and Kebabs yeah. and Cars, we kick it. So Kebabs and Cars, head on down there. Then Race Wars is on, the, we'll, we'll call it the runway event. Yep. That's on the Saturday and the Sunday, the 29th and the... So that's, sorry, Todd, I think... Yeah, 29th, that 29th and, and the 1st of March. That's the 1st of yeah. March, yep. yep. All right, there you go. <laughs> 
that's at the Albany uh, Airport. And then we've got the racehorse. Sorry, we've got to talk Sunday night as well at the Jew South. Jew South. That's still yep. happening as well. That's a Correct. huge night. That yeah, really yeah. is a... Yeah. And I think, you know, even if you're a spectator, head down there as well. I think yeah. that's a great, great event. Yeah. Well, and, most of the competitors are there. And the uh, again, you know, I keep... I, I hark back to that, that grassroots approach with motorsport. It, it doesn't... It doesn't um, come off any better than that 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 Sunday night gathering. Yeah, we get a majority of the competitors come back, and everyone just is talking war stories over the course of the weekend. Or yeah, you know. Yeah. So um, yeah, I would highly, highly recommend people coming, even if it's just for a drink, just to come and check it out. And you know, we do we do an award ceremony, but it's just it's good to also show uh, the city of Albany the, the the level of support we have from the spectators and the competitors alike. The Juice no, uh, yeah. South are also uh, quite happy to tell you that that is their biggest night of the year. Uh, it eclipses New Year's. Yep. Uh, in wow. Albany, yep. so we bring a uh, little grassroots event that tear up a runway, and we well, don't tear up a runway, but we we go and have some fun on a runway, and yeah, and, um, yeah we bring enough people to town that we, we put on a bigger party than New Year's at uh, at Due South. So yeah, that's a down. huge. I went last year on, and and uh, Todd and I we had to it was standing room only yeah. literally. It was a, it was a great night actually, and yeah. the CEO of the city of Albany's there yep. as well, and um, yep. you know all the all the speeches, and uh, you get to see a bit of John stand up as well, you know, comedy <laughs> routine. He was great. <laughs> so look, I yeah, I vouch for that. That's a great night. So that's yep. on the Sunday night. That's yep. once the runway event has completed, yep. and then of course we've got Monday at Middleton Beach. Get down there nine o'clock. It's kicking off. Yep. Yeah, correct. That's for the sprint. Can't go wrong. And we get to see the Talk and Power Evo 5 in action. Well, get, get down early if you're on the sprint. I mean, the first yeah. car runs probably before 9 o'clock. I, I, I'd, I'd suffice to say get down there even earlier Yeah. because um, all the vehicles will be setting into the pits to set up prior to that, and it's mm. great. Early morning, grab a coffee, see all those cars rolling in, get a nice position on the start line. Yeah, yeah. Now, the other thing we'll just mention before we finish up here, there's also convoys leaving on the Friday as well. I actually did that last year, and yep. I must admit that was a really great way to drive down there. Yep. I went in a convoy. I think it was, I can't remember his first name, but the guy with the RX-7, Brant, his, his surname, Michael, I think. I think it was... Uh, He's a target mm-hmm. guy, uh, Todd. Red oh, yeah, because Todd, Todd will know him now that you said that. <laughs> a million names and targets. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But it's Brandt a, is his surname, but he was a yeah. lovely fellow. He towed yeah. that down, and then yeah. there was a couple of um, volunteers as well that yeah. went with us, and then a couple of competitors as well. We yeah. all drove together. Yeah, yeah, but we we take safety seriously across the weekend, and yeah. that yeah. starts from when you leave for the uh, for the drive down yeah. uh, to when you've got home. So yeah. um, check yeah. the Facebook page. Uh, for yeah, the there'll be events on the, on the Facebook event page. Times. Yeah, um, but join one. Yeah, yeah, definitely get on a convoy. As I said, I can vouch for that. And we pulled in, we stopped four times. Probably, probably, I would have stopped probably only once. But yeah. in a convoy, they were they yeah. felt more comfortable stopping four yeah. times. So we all stopped, stretched the legs. It was magnificent. It was really good. Actually. There's no rush. You want to get there. Yeah, that's you know, right. An Albany Highway can be um, a challenging piece of road at times. Yeah. You know, and for you know for WA, um, we want to ensure that everyone gets down. Then you know we've we've had flawless safety record for people getting down to mm. and back from Albany. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's we also, want to maintain that. It's also a double demerits weekend and there's nothing worse for a motorsport enthusiast to uh, not have your licence. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, we're all on that, display. But, yeah. You know, we're all yeah. on display. If you go there and you, you mess up or you, 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 you feel like you need to runway race on the way to the runway, you're not doing... Any, any any of us any favors, yeah, yeah especially no. yourself. So and the local police are out. I've seen it every year. I've headed down that they they are well aware and, and they are know, not friendly if you're being stupid. That's right. They're mindful yeah. of the event and they, again, you know, the constabulary are very very supportive of the event. But if you take the piss, yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty much got got pretty much got one rule and that's that be. Yeah, 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 yeah. yep, <laughs> yep. Now we can all vouch for that, yep. so we can definitely endorse that. Hey guys, look, I can thank you very much for coming in. I'm, I'm just looking at the timer here. We've actually gone full episode here, so wow, we'll, there you we'll, go. Be, um, we'll put a line through the rest of the stuff. It was only the Bathurst 12 hour. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, what happened? That's bunch right. of, bunch well, of cars Bentley won after six years of trying. That's a good, that's a good yeah. thing. Yeah, we can wrap it up quickly. Bentley won <laughs> after, yeah. after numerous years. That thing sounds amazing. I just have to say, oh, I am unsure how they so. get a twin turbo 4 litre V8 
to sound like a 27 litre Merlin V12. I have no idea. That's it, incredible. It did Beautiful sound pretty nice. Fantastic. You probably heard more this year of it than you did last year, though, Dina. I no, no. I um, <laughs> I saw most of the race last year, unlike some of our other uh, uh, teammates. Yeah. But um, <laughs> uh, to hear those things in person is is incredible. So it <laughs> adds another level when you're watching it. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Do you think do you think the uh, that style of series will to open a discussion overtake supercars are where it's at now easily yes I, just, right, so I saw too. the start list for this year and it's ZB Commodores which aren't even relevant anymore because yeah. they don't exist and a half dozen also Mustangs you can upset Nick though if you bag out the supercars you know no, that no no no, 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 no Todd don't be that we, all, we, come on we've all <laughs> very professional we've all yeah. grown up with it you know don't get me wrong but I just think where does it align now There's, you yeah. have to have relevance and I, and I just the 12 hour I was glued to the screen watching it I watched supercar rounds and I fall asleep yeah, yeah it was magnificent it was pretty good racing and even if so not in entirety but Russell Ingle raised a, a valid point today which was the mark cars within the category of, of Bathurst 12 hour were running around that track in the same time the V8 supercars did yeah yep. they're half the cost yep uh, to manufacture they're half the cost to run uh, and they look a whole lot more like the production cars than yeah than what they're currently and running they sound as a thing. And they sound good. Yeah. As interesting. far as a category goes, I it's it's difficult to see how V eight supercars will stay relevant in its current yeah. format. It's interesting you mentioned that actually. I mean those guys were limited to two oh five as well. Correct. They had to keep it yeah. over two oh five. Nick Perk had I think dropped into it in oh four and made it four and it, yeah. well it actually it, listening to the telecast he was saying he saw an 04 coming up I mean the predictive lap timing on the thing and they were grabbing a handful yeah, of brake yeah. yeah I saw that on the, the last too, yeah. so I, I personally don't understand it let them let them stretch the legs but if you've got a car that's half the cost just as safe doing the same sort of times as V8 supercars yeah but logic doesn't does apply it, it doesn't does it's it. a monopoly you know that, is, everything's yeah. homologated yep. and they've got I mean, we could go down the rabbit yep. hole but I think I think you know glossing over um uh, the 12 hour there are so many different platforms in there and there are different classes having the slower class and the faster classes I think and that harks back to where Bathurst and that's what racing in Australia was all about 30 40 years ago you know mm. you had the minis versus the Camaros yeah so you know bring it back yeah and I think it's a perfect opportunity and considering that supercars owns the rights for it anyway I just think our world's become a much smaller place I mean we can ship things in from across the world no, quicker than we can from across our own thing and if the sport doesn't have a relevance globally then mm. it's going to struggle yeah um that that gt3 category of racing you can go anywhere in the world and watch uh, yeah. and the cars are the same cars yeah so you can fit within you can see how this fits anywhere else and that i think is important to people these days because the world's a smaller place and we've got access to spa and yeah. And um, yeah. Daytona and those sort of events. I didn't even touch on the Asia Pacific region. There is mm. a massive racing market within the Asia Huge. Pacific region, which we're not even looking at. And there's a, there's a lot of money in that. Yeah. yeah. A lot of money. Yep. No, it certainly is. Hey, two. Two just other yeah. points I would just want to quickly touch on before we finish up here. It's been uh, quick a long episode. <laughs> quick <laughs> shout out to John Zapier. Hit the sand pretty hard on Saturday night. Uh, got some. If you go to his Facebook page, you'll see that there. Did see Looks that. Like the shoots come the off shoot the car. The shoot just come off it. Yeah, Both come of off the car. Yeah. yeah. See you later. So he's gone into the sand pretty hard there, but uh, looks like there wasn't a lot of damage done. Uh, he'll have that cleaned up in no time, and luckily he wasn't hurt. And the other one, big shout I want to do is for a man that sat right over there not that long ago, Dave Smith. Yeah. He won on the weekend the 2019 Motorsport Australia Official of the Year. So congratulations to Dave Smith of Targa West. Um, we only saw Dave on Saturday. I only found, I, I think it was Saturday night, the year ceremony. Awesome, so the best bit about that was Dave thought he was going down because the event Dave works for, Targa West, also took out uh, they did. Motorsport Australia, West Australian Event of the Year. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Dave thought he was there for that. Yeah. Uh, and yes. I have it on good authority, uh, talking to Dave this afternoon, I, I hope you're listening, Dave, uh, that when they started announcing the West Australian Official of the Year, uh, Dave was not paying attention. Dave <laughs> was eyeing off the Targa West Trophy for West Australian Event of the Year. So, um, yeah, 
well done, Dave. Much deserved. Um, yeah, he's definitely. put a lot of years into our sport and uh, and very very deserving result. Mm. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. All right, Dieter, thank you very much for coming in. No problem. Jamie, thank you very much for coming in. If people want to know anything about Race Wars, racewars.com.au, very simple. You've got a Facebook page, you've got an Instagram page. Yep. I know, and it's That's very it. well sought after. Good information. It's always relevant up there and do a magnificent job. Head on down to Albany, Come get to down Albany. there, and you will not be disappointed. Thanks, guys, for coming in. Much appreciated. Todd, thanks for joining us again. And unfortunately, right. Simon couldn't make it tonight. He's not feeling the best, but I forgot to mention that at the start. But anyway, he's uh, not feeling the best, but uh, we'll catch up with him on the next podcast. Hey, guys, thanks a lot. Thanks we'll for having us. We'll catch you on the next one. Cheers. See you, guys. Talk and Power, your motorsport and motoring radio show. Now on 88.5 FM, the valley comes alive. And podcasting across iTunes and talkandpower.com.au.